What's going on, everybody? My name is Tamar Turner, and I'm the host of the Down to Business podcast, where the mission is to really provide exposure to businesses, entrepreneurs, and artists all around the world in their respective crafts. And we do so through audio and visual interviews where we come on and we talk about all things from getting into the business to most memorable moments to even some advice that you may give for other business owners and entrepreneurs out there. So if this sounds like something that you would be interested in, we'd love to have you on for an interview. Please be sure to reach out via any social media platform and we'll definitely get back to you. But until then, enjoy this episode. What's going on, everybody? I'd like to welcome you back to another episode of the Down to Business podcast here with Tamar Turner. And like I said, we we really just keeping the train rolling here. I'm really just I've really just been excited. I've really just had some extra time on my hands. So I've really been able to, to get a lot more in tune with my schedule, to reach out to a lot more people, to send some emails, to just reach out via social media and really get things, you know, flowing and glowing. So from the merchandise to just the episodes and the content, I'm really just excited. I appreciate it. You know, everybody who's been tapping in making it happen, showing love. So we, like I said, we really just keeping things rolling. So I'm sitting down today with Kayla, really excited for her just because, you know, we went to ECU together. I really just kind of watched her growth and watched everything that she's done, like a true entrepreneur. I'm not going to spoil it. I'm not really going to give y'all too much, but like I said, really just has a lot going on, really has worked with a lot of people, both in the local, you know, community, as well as like the ECU community and then kind of outside from there. So the testimony was kind of her, her work and her background is really crazy. So I'm excited um, that we can get into it. So Kayla, can you just, uh, well, first and foremost, how you doing? I'm good. I hope you're doing okay. I'm always good. I'm always good. I thank you for taking the time out. So for the, you know, the people out there tapping in who may know you, who may know me, who may not, you know, just be new viewers and listeners and everything like that. Can you just tell us a little bit about yourself and then what brings you on the podcast today? So my name is Kayla Jones. I'm now a graduate of East Carolina University. I have two businesses at the moment, um, K Grandier Hair Collection and KG Digital Creativity. So if you have seen me on social media, it's probably promoting one or both of those. I believe we met probably BSU at ECU, one of those meetings. And it was really great to see uh, Black leadership on campus. So getting that start definitely helped me to be where I am today. I love it. And yeah, it was definitely BSU, even as you were talking, I was in my head like, yeah. And it's funny that you kind of bring that up and and bring up the whole point about Black leadership. I I definitely do echo that sentiment. But I also, I saw a Watch the Yard page on Instagram that kind of hones in on like a lot of uh, Greek life and things kind of going on in the Greek and minority community. And they posted, a they kind of had a post where they were just like, what is an organization at school that you attribute to outside your Greek organization that, you know, really kind of shaped you as a leader or really put, exposed you to a lot of, you know, different experiences. And I commented Black Student Union because that was really where, excuse me, I say that like it was, that was kind of one of the first things I was exposed to from orientation to then actually getting on campus and joining and meeting those people. And like you said, really, that was my first kind of sign of black leadership. And it was just like, wow, this is this is kind of just crazy at this big, you know, PWI, this big campus at the time that's only really growing. It's crazy just to see, you know, the minority community kind of together like this, what they do, the vibe, the culture. So I definitely do. The fact that you can say that and the fact that I can say that really just goes, to, you know, show the testament of the organization and the impact that they're, that they're having. So you said that you're running two businesses. So can you kind of tell us the timeline of how you got started with the hair side of things and how you got started with the digital creative side of things? Yeah, definitely. So I started um, K Grandier Hair Collection in 2018. So I believe that was like the summer of me approaching my sophomore year in college. And I pretty much started that because I wanted to offer luxury hair, but at affordable prices. As Black women, that's something like we like to do, keep our hair looking nice. And um, I know I've always, I like to say that if you look good, you feel good. So for one, if I offer these types of products, but it's available to everyone, I'm now helping other people, you know, feel good about themselves. So just promoting um, high self-esteem. And when it comes to KG Digital Creativity, I started that last semester or last summer, actually, at the height of the pandemic. And I had actually been an intern for um, MK and Co., um, Monet Cassine, she is also um, a graduate of East Carolina University. So it definitely the connects are lifelong. Oh, yeah, definitely a legend. Definitely somebody who 
I was excited to bring on the podcast somebody who even from her episode until now, just watching her growth, just watching her involvement and just the impact that she's had and everything that she's been able to accomplish and everything, you know, that she has coming. It's really just exciting. And you know, the fact that that's all within the ECU community, all with people who we were surrounded by, all with our peers, all people that are really making an impact like that. And that's crazy that it, it can really just come to fruition like that. And the fact that, you know, we can spread love help each other in the process. So something that you touched on is something that I love was really just the hair side of things, you know, just making that just makes y'all feel good. That's something that you just love to do. So the fact that, you know, you're in this space now, you're, you have a business around it, and you know, the fact that you're able to get clientele who your mission is, like you said, to really make them feel good, to make them feel luxurious, to really like that, to really want to, you know, not only shop with you, but really also understand the mission and the impact that you're trying to have. What has that experience been like being able to Obviously, some girls that you already knew, but being able to, you know, just have new clients and but really still spread that impact and really still still spread that message of wanting them to feel good, wanting them to feel beautiful. It's definitely been an eye opening experience. Uh, for one, it got me out of my comfort zone. Being a business person, uh, if people met me my freshman and sophomore year, I wouldn't describe myself as like outgoing. I was pretty shy. I was always involved, but I was still like kind of to myself when it came to personal time. But this has definitely taught me how to, you know, start conversations and reach out to people, uh, go out of your way to make someone's day feel good. And not just to make a purchase, but to just like make that connect with one another uh, because you never know when you'll meet someone down the line and not that you may need something from them but it's it's great to connect with one another and have some shared experiences absolutely i couldn't agree more and i can definitely hear and tell that it's a learning experience but it's something that you enjoy doing it's something that's really becoming a passion i can really just tell from the obviously I can't necessarily shop with you directly, but just from the content, just from, you know, seeing the the testimonials, just from seeing that the love you get on social media platforms and just from checking out the website and really just honing in on everything that you really accomplish. It's like I told you in the DMs, I'm mad that I, I, I've really been slack. I'm not going to give them the exact terminology I use, but I, I, I really... <laughs> I had to get on me, but it's it's always just amazing just to see that people are doing good things, just to see that people are in different lanes. And I love when people take on, you know, multiple different avenues. So what would you say really, was there like a defining moment? Was there at a point in time where you were really like, yo, I really want to get into the social media side of things. I, I love social media. I'm in tune with it. I have what I have going on with the hair and everything like that. I feel like I can balance. So at, at what point in time did you really realize like, hey, this is something that I really want to get going? Probably when I started working with Monet and I realized it was kind of natural to me because I had already been promoting my businesses and being a leader on campus or being so involved uh, with other organizations, I was able to use those communication skills and use the interpersonal skills to build with clients and to make them feel comfortable with my work and with my ability to create whatever they would like uh, when it is when it comes to uh, graphic designing and when it comes to social media I kind of just went for it I wasn't exactly sure uh, whether or not it would be successful but I do feel like I'm more open to trying things now rather than I was when I first started so it was just like hey like let's just see where it can go for sure. And I think that's a message. I really think that's a gem for the people out there listening. Just the fact that, you know, sometimes coming into a business, sometimes even if you're not in a business, just life in general, life will place you in different situations and scenarios where you really have to step outside your comfort zone, where, you know, you have to really sometimes take a risk, take a chance on yourself. But who better to take it on, you know, than yourself and what you have going on and maybe a vision or a passion that you truly believe in. And like Kay just said, you never know what can come from it. And it was just like, yo, let's do it. But it's one thing to, you know, just take a risk and really just go with the flow. But it's another thing to really take the risk and and really be all money in. Like, you know, really just put everything forward. And at the same time, hold yourself accountable because, yo, we are our, you, you all, I feel like you always have to be your worst critic. I feel like nobody's going to hold yourself accountable as hard as you, no matter, you know, how much people want you to really do well, excel, be successful, right. all of that. At the end of the day, yeah, it always has to be about you and what you want to do and how you want to feel. So what has coming into business, kind of being an entrepreneur at this point, kind of finding that balance, but kind of serving a variety of crowds. What has been like a memorable experience for you, whether it be a testimonial, whether it just be you being able to work with a particular client, whether it just be maybe even experience a, a vendor type thing, an event that you were at. What's something that's really um, sticking out in your mind along your journey right now? I'll probably say, and it's not necessarily like a good experience, but it was a pivotal moment. I believe it was like fall 2019 and I was overwhelmed and I was doing too much. And I ultimately ended up being uh, diagnosed with like clinical depression. And while at that point in life, I was just like, I felt like a failure. I felt like I 
wasn't doing enough, but in reality, I was doing everything. I mean, I always told people, like, I do so much because I feel like I'll never be enough. But in reality, me just walking in my purpose was enough. Me waking up on a daily basis and just trying was enough. Uh, That was a pivotal moment for me because I had to realize that I was more than my accolades. And sometimes I feel like life or God will sit you down when it comes time to really listen to him and to really focus and hone in on what what's really important or also sometimes as a helper like I really love helping people I really love serving people I feel like that's my purpose but you can't pour from an empty vessel so that point in life where my it seemed like everything was booming and I was overbooked uh, but classes are still going and it was just a lot going on but I, I ultimately got to know myself more. Uh, I was able to realize that I was more than what I did or didn't do. And I wasn't just my failures. And that it's okay to fail. That's oftentimes where we learn the most lessons is at rock bottom. So after that, it hasn't been just straight up from here. It hasn't been just very successful, but I had to learn that growth isn't linear. It's very up and down and you have your good and your bad days, but ultimately that pushed me to go even harder to today. That's deep, very deep and and, and very, very true. And it's just like when you really kind of hit me personal only because it's just like you really came to the realization that you, you found your purpose, you accepted your purpose and you live in your purpose. And sometimes it's really not easy, you know, being on a particular path or, you know, wanting to, wanting certain things for yourself, wanting to be in certain spaces and places and areas financially, emotionally, physically, mentally, the whole nine. But, you know, sometimes just, that's not just a path for you, or maybe time, it just doesn't allow for that right now, but because timing is everything. It's it's really just all about God's plan, truly, like as cliche as it may sound, or sometimes much easier said than done, but sometimes you just have to realize that you're not meant to be here right now. It's not to say you're not meant to be here at all. It's just not your time, you know, and and I I think that's a hard thing to accept. I think that's a hard thing to, you know, once you accept it to really just live in it, you know, from there. So it's just like the fact that you can then sometimes you have to veer off your path. Like you said, this was a pivotal moment for you. You wouldn't even say that this was necessarily a good experience, but it was something that was needed. So that kind of leads me into my next question, too. So what do you say to someone who, you know, is not necessarily on the wrong path, but, you know, just having trouble accepting their purpose, living in their purpose? But that's, you know, is it granted? It could cause them to go away from the vision sometimes. But like you said, you have your good days, you have your bad days. So what do you say to somebody sometimes who just needs that extra push to really keep going? Or I'd probably say delayed, not denied. And I have to repeat that every day to myself because there are a lot of things that I feel like, oh, I should have by now. And even with social media today, like you can find yourself comparing yourself to other people and looking at your people, other people your age and just thinking like, oh, like, you know, they're so much farther than me, but, you know, people only post the highlights of life. They don't really post when they're down bad and rent is due and they need a little extra money for food and things of that nature. So never compare yourself to other people. Um, Comparison is a thief of joy, Uh, but also make sure you're moving in the right direction. It doesn't matter how fast you're going as long as you're moving just just keep moving um just like j cole said you know good thing is you came a long way but bad thing is you went the wrong way you don't want to go nowhere fast so uh move with a purpose um it's really a marathon not a race like life is really a marathon if you can just get up today and decide that you can take care of yourself and you can check a few things off your to-do list, that's that's good for you. Your path is not going to look like everyone else's and you're not going to go the same speed as everyone, but that doesn't mean you're any more of a, or any less of a person just because you're a little behind. And who's to say you're behind? I know at one point um, I was talking to my brother and I was, I, I thought I would be in law school by now. And I, you know, honestly, I'm going to take another year off, but he was okay with it. And he was like, um, why, why are you rushing? Like, who, who do you think is rushing you? Cause I'm definitely not. And I had to sit back like, wow, like, why am I rushing life? I'm only 22. Like, where do I think I'm supposed to be right now? So those are a few tips I think will get you through. And honestly, just one day at a time, like that's all it takes. She said a few, man. That was a plethora of gems in there. That's that's really crazy. Everything that you said really can resonate with someone in some way. I definitely do agree with it. 
once you know it's, it's no rush and i think but i think that really just also goes to show when you really just want so much for yourself when you really just have such high dreams and aspirations sometimes where you are is just like uh you get a little frustrated or you just like man i know that i could be doing this or it's just like sometimes your dreams like to other people sometimes it, it's not a thing of you know people don't want it as bad as you do. Sometimes people just don't understand it. Like sometimes you can really just give somebody a visualization of a dream or give somebody something that you have in mind or something that you want to do. And because you know, that may not just be their area of interest, or they may just have never explored something like that. They just don't necessarily understand it. So it's just like, sometimes it's just frustrating when you just feel like you're the only one that really gets it or it's a, it's a select group of people. So you feel like you preach into the choir. But I think that also is a good thing because it keeps you motivated. It just shows you that, look, I'm, I'm this young, but at the same time, I want this, I want this much for myself. And it's not to say that age, I, I don't care that that's what it should be. Excuse me. I think it should be one of those things where you, you look at it from the perspective of, look, I want to kind of set the record. I want to be the first to do this. Or I'll, look, I, I want to defy the odds in a sense, but it's also at the same time, you know, timing is everything. And sometimes you can't rush your blessing. I think that that's very important. So one day at a time, that was that was really my motto at one point, my, my mantra at one point. You could hit up a lot of my friends and even family whenever they would check on me. That was my answer one day at a time, because that's I, I love just living in the moment, you know, just going right. with the flow, really just appreciating each moment and each really just each moment, each second each of each day. It really just forces me to hone in in a different way. So as somebody who, you know, is able to come on here and really just, I feel like your mindset has shifted. I feel like, you know, you're you're in a different space, but you're happy where you're at. You're excelling and you want so much more for yourself. Can you just give us a a dive into an experience with you, whether it just be, you know, shopping with you from the hair side of things and wanting to feel luxurious or whether it just be, you know, when it comes to the social media content, creating side of things, if somebody is kind of coming to you with a vision or if somebody is kind of coming to you with, hey, I want this done. What is that experience like, you know, really getting them to really, I don't know, I guess really, I would say bringing their vision to life in a sense. What can somebody expect, you know, when they come to work with you or when they come to shop with you? So when someone comes to work with me, I think specifically for uh, digital creativity, I think websites are probably my favorite or logos uh, because you really get to have a conversation. And I know on the business side, you call it a consultation, but I really like when I get on the phone with clients and they rant or not rant, but just they get to vent and tell you about their ideas and where they want to be. And you just see or hear that spark in their voice. It's a really great experience. And it makes my heart, you know, kind of beat with a little joy to know that I'm helping further someone's vision because I know what it takes to even take that first step and say, I'm going to start a business and set that account up and follow through and present the idea to your friends and family. So we probably start with, you know, like a, a phone call and I just let them tell me about everything that they want to be, want to do, and then where they would like to go as far as the service. So say if we're working on a logo, you know, I like to highlight the colors um, in their in their brand. And what does that mean? What does that stand for? How can we bring that to life? What other attributes or ideas would you like to be in this logo? And I basically try to find out what's important to them and see how I can emphasize that and bring it to life when it comes to whatever I'm working on for them. Then we'll probably follow up. I have like a form and they can fill out questions basically to just get them to kind of brainstorm and so I can get as much information as possible. And while I am working with them, I try to stay try to keep them uh, with updates and just communicate with them, of course, being as nice as possible. But I also like to give them a little leeway. I know it's not easy to just come up with ideas like in two days. So if it does take you a little time, whether that's two weeks or even a month and you're ready to come back to me and we can work together, that's fine. Um, I think another thing that sets me apart When it comes to my services, I like to uh, give payment plans, especially for starter business and small businesses, because it's not that easy to come up with the funds and sometimes you don't have them. Um, But I know that you need this logo, those business cards, that design. So if I can get that to you as soon as possible so you can start pushing merchandise to make some more money and then later on you can, you know, uh, come back and pay me, that's fine. As long as we make that agreement and we can communicate, I'm I'm definitely down with that. So uh, I think... I like to uh, emphasize as much ease as possible and make the process really comfortable. Wow. I'm at a loss for words. I was I was listening to everything that you said. That's just that's just crazy. But what what really like what really just blew my mind just now, like I was really just saying like that's a heater right there is what you said about the payment plans, because it, it just kind of brought up a, 
a ripple effect of things. So I, I, I love that. I love that I did affect that. You know, you you thought that further. Like I didn't even that that didn't even really register as a thought to me. The fact that you know, if I put a business on a payment plan, then they can get you know whatever they need from me out quicker. Obviously, they need this you know as forms of promotion, as forms to you know reach other people and benefit their business. So if it's benefiting their business, it means that you know it could be benefiting them monetarily as well. Well, if they're making more money, then you know that means that. They can also afford to pay and even, you know, get more services and more bit. But the fact that, you know, if I charge this flat rate right then and there and I tell them, yo, if, if you don't have it like this, then I can't really do anything for you. Well, then, you know, now they can't get anything out or maybe they can't promote in the way that they expect it to. Hence, they could be losing out on money. That's just, you know, that's just crazy that, you know, somebody can be that selfless and somebody can think of something like that. I love that. But what it really also triggered in my head was kind of just this post that's been going around around more recently on social media, just about how people say, or I wouldn't even say it's really going around more recently because I've seen it, you know, posted in the years, but how people, you know, sometimes have a bad experience with a black business or may not get a certain product or something and live up to their expectations. And so they just say, you know, see, this is why I can't, you can't shop with your own people or see, this is why I can't support black businesses. So I kind of don't like that just because at first I kind of just I would say I really paid no attention to it just because while I, I, I've had definitely bad experiences with black businesses, I would not say that that deters me from returning or shopping with you or even would deter me to put out, you know, such a statement like that. And the only reason why I say that is just because I feel like we don't bash these other companies the same way. Or when we do bash them, like, let's just say you have a bad experience with Fashion Nova. Or let's just say you have a bad experience with Macy's or a, a Target or a Walmart where you may bash them or come to social media or go viral. How likely are you to really return? to these household names? How likely are you to really go back and, you know, shop with them again? And you're not, while you may blast them on social media or Twitter for, for your benefit and, and to get something out of it, what happens in the end? You still kind of return. So I, I feel like we can't just have that attitude, especially for people that are up and coming. The same way that, you know, you, you, you go back and shop with these businesses or they, you wait so-and-so amount of week, you should show the same respect, you know, to these smaller businesses. And I even saw some smaller business kind of post something like that. Look, we're working twice as hard, if not 10 times as hard as these bigger businesses, because we don't have it all, you know, in shop like they do. We can't afford to mass produce and different things like that. We have demands. We run into certain things, especially with COVID going on and everything like that. So I think it just goes to show some of the respect and decency that you also have to show to these businesses and how one bad experience really shouldn't be indicative of just moving forward or how you, you know, shed light on your people. At the end of the day, whether you had a bad, maybe you just don't return to that particular business, but you can't put out a statement on a lot of black businesses because that hurts a lot of people. So something that I think about all the time, and, and, and it really just kind of, it really just kind of became more clear with your answer was everything that you've listed just about from people having to fill out the form just to really, you know, that personalized approach that you take with all your clientele that you really want people to, you know, get the best experience with you possible and get the best outcome. So while you do that and while you extend this service to others, I also think about how you have to do this for yourself and your businesses, multiple businesses at this point. I see how much you promote. I follow all of your pages. I see the content that you're dropping on a daily basis. Where is really, where does really that drive and that motivation come from to really want to, you know, not only want to help others, but, you know, also want to promote yourself this much. And where do you know a lot of these ideas come from? Like, are you kind of just sitting around one day and say, hey, I want to make some new content. Do you have stuff kind of already in the tuck? And I mean, if you can't give all the secrets, I definitely understand that. <laughs> but I know you do a lot, you know, truly, like from the, the content to just the different pages to the variety to how you switch it up. So where does all of that really come from? Um, so when it comes to planning my content, I do. It's not as organized. It really is just, oh, I get an idea for today and I write it down. But I do have them all in one like big document or I have a folder of just ideas. And if I can come up with, you know, a week's worth of content or two weeks worth of content from that large file or the large stack in my room, I try to get that together. And then, you know, for the week, I'll um, start pushing that content out. I think my drive, well, I know my drive comes from basically like my life or my beginnings. Like I know I basically, I lost my mom, um, my stepdad, all my grandparents, and then like my aunt and my uncle at a young age. So when it comes to like drive and motivation and having to push through, even though you really don't feel like it, I've been doing that for years. Um, resiliency is something I, I kind of had to have in order to survive because I me and my brother had such a rough upbringing but one thing that we always had of course was love he always taught me that no matter what's going on like you can still be nice to someone and make someone else's day even if yours is going bad and then when it comes to uh just drive and sacrifice I know he sacrificed a lot for me to be 
able to go to college. So I know I owe it all to him to make it through, but also to my family that I have lost and the ones that are still around. I, it's so much bigger than me. Also, the the goals I have uh, for when I am finally a lawyer, I basically want to make group homes across the country for young guys and even girls who uh, have been in prison or in jail. Um, and I got that from going on an alternative break experience. I leave my freshman and junior year for like a week. I volunteered at Juvenile Detention Center in South Carolina, and that just tug at my heartstrings. I was like, this is what I want to do. And a lot of it is because um, if you do see me on social media, not only am I like promoting my businesses, but I also like advocacy and civil rights and anything Black history. Um, I was an English literature and African African American studies major. So that's that's what I love to do because not only am I living this Black experience, I'm reading about it and I can educate others. But going back to the volunteer experiences, a lot of them just needed a second chance or even a third or fourth chance. I want to help and I want to be able to serve the people that society has kind of cast away or forgotten about. That's my goal, to be able to have those group homes and then just be able to provide resources for them and cut down on recidivism rates so they don't have to go back in and out of jail. Uh, A lot of them go back because that's the only good meal they know that they're going to get. Uh, Sometimes they're familiar with the officers and they know that somebody cares about them, but we need to instill into our young men and back into our community that we have love around us. We have the motivation and the help um, to reach out to one another. We don't have to go back or do the things to, you know, try to get resources in bad ways. You know, a lot of times we look at these people um, or society looks at these people in a bad light. But honestly, kids were in there for trying to get food for their families. It's not like they're just bad kids and they need to be locked up forever. Uh, So that's a lot of where my drive comes because uh, in the long run, I want to help a multitude of people. I feel like my life is not just mine. It's owed to a number of people that I can help in the long run. Firstly, my condolences, you know, for just everything that you share, but I definitely do want to thank you for that, that true moment of transparency. Honestly, since I've hit play on this interview, you've been nothing but transparent, and but you've been nothing but real, and I really think that it's needed out there. It's to, I definitely think that you spoke to somebody, you spoke to me today, and so I definitely do appreciate you, not only for sharing the space, but also just really just giving us the insides and the outs of what really makes you you, aside from the business, aside from the entrepreneur lifestyle that you're, you know, taking part of what really just makes you, like you said, just living for. It's, it's not just about you anymore. And that really just goes to show the the timeliness, even with my last episode being bigger than me, how people, you know, I feel like sometimes it just takes these experiences and I don't really just put the word experiences out there and you kind of do whatever you want with it just to anybody and everybody listening, just because it can be whatever. It can be good. It can be bad. It can just be life changing. It can be pivotal. It can be something neutral. It can, it can just be anything. It can be multiple. It can, it can just be one. But sometimes it's really just needed just for us to, you know, sometimes just adopt a different lifestyle, adopt a different mindset and really just come into our true purpose, as Kayla spoke about even earlier in the interview and really just realize, you know, that it's really just about impact. And and the more that, you know, you kind of spread that message to others, the more that you kind of just continue to live in that truth. It really just you notice the the change around you and, and you just notice how how as a people, how how great we can be. And I really think that it's amazing that you can really just come on here and share that, that you can really just come on here and really just realize that it's amazing going through that process. It's not always easy. You know, it's not always something that we want to go through and always something that we want to face. But, you know, when we truly come to grips with it, it's amazing. And and whether that kind of it translates into business, it translates into your just every day, it translates into your mental, your physical. It's really just something cool. So, no, Kayla, I definitely thank you for it. I'm definitely wishing you the best of luck. That vision is amazing. And it's definitely something that while you're manifesting it, it's already done. So I'm excited to, you know, see what comes from it, what's going on. So, and you kind of even um, set it up a little bit. So something that you talked about was, like you said, you once you become a lawyer, you want to kind of open up group homes and really just tackle underserved communities. So what are some, what are some things on the horizon, you know, for Kager and your, for, um, for the digital creative experience, for everything that you kind of want to do to really help you hone in and, and really help you tackle some of these goals in the years to come? So basically, I hope it all goes full circle. (laughs) Ultimately, I would like for KG Digital Creativity to be able to um, help other um, students or even uh, the younger community, whether that be like high school, middle school, learn how to, you know, make websites, logos on the side so that can be their uh, source of income. Um, So 
hopefully later in life when I do, you know, have my own building, corporation or anything large like that, that's something I can do to give back to the community, but also help set students up or younger kids up to be able to earn some income on the side and even adults they should be able to you know learn a trade if that's what they would like to do because you know um, a four-year college it isn't for everyone but as long as we are giving people a means to provide for themselves that's all I can ask for that's all I can do it's not just about you know giving someone a fish you know teach them the fish and they can provide for themselves a lifetime and not only for themselves they can pass it on so it's going full circle and we can help each other as far as the, like I was saying, as far as the group homes, I would want to be able to fund their, you know, education and going back to trade school um, and giving them a another chance at life. As like I was talking about, uh, everyone could be in their shoes at one point. It's just the fact that someone helped us and got us out of trouble before it got that bad. Um, so that's what I hope for KG to be. Another business is coming soon. I know Monet uh, talked about it uh, briefly on Twitter, but we will be collabing soon. And I'm super excited for that because she's put me onto so much uh, now. So for us to be working on a larger project, I can't wait for everyone to see that. Um, a lot of new products are coming. I have so many ideas. It's just a, a matter of when they're going to come out. <laughs> but just stay tuned. And I really appreciate the support that I've gotten so thus far, and even the support years ago. Um, I always say that no matter how big or small, if someone has ever done something to me, they're a reason or they're a part of the reason I am the woman I am today. So I'm so grateful to have met everyone and even just the small conversations or experiences with people. I really appreciate them because they are the reason I am today. Man, I love every bit of this, man, from start to finish. I'm excited. She even just teased at the end about the new <laughs> product to come. and I mean, the new business to come, but the new products drop. And it's just, like I said, if y'all don't if y'all don't already follow her, I'm definitely going to get her to drop her social media and stuff at the end. And I'm going to make sure that we include it in the bio, like always. But y'all definitely got to tap in with her on social media, not only just for her, but just because of everybody, you know, within her circle, everybody that she knows, Monet, to be one of them. And definitely check out Monet's episode, just as a side note, episode 10. Um, she was actually the, the last episode of series one so when i first started you know deciding that every 10 episodes i'm gonna do a series so marketing is not one size fits all so definitely check that out and definitely just look at the growth from when we did that episode in april of uh 2020 actually and just look at up until now it's, it's really just beautiful man so definitely you know check that out um and let me know what y'all think about that but it's amazing man i love that you know you can just come on here and really just just the i love just the mindset i love just everything that you were doing before we even stepped on here and hit play and i love everything that you're going to be doing after you know this interview concludes but i'm really just glad that we were able to just tap in and really just you know get an inside look get an inside look of, of how everything really came to be i think something that i've really grown to love and i think this podcast really does a great job of exposing me to that and really you know taking us on the first a firsthand look is really just people's creative process or really just how experiences, you know, can mold our, our lives sometimes for the better, sometimes for the worse. But nonetheless, it, it's all just a part of that process. It's all just a part of that journey. So, you know, before we wrap things up here today, Kayla, before you tell everybody where they can lock in with you at on social media, is there anything that you feel like we haven't touched on this interview today that you'd like the people to know, whether it just be about you, whether it be about any of your businesses, whether it just be about anything personal or anything? I think the main thing I, I would like to touch on, or not touch on, but just drop before we end, is don't be afraid to ask for help. Like, no matter how big or small, I feel like I don't have any regrets in life. But one thing I do wish that I had done a little sooner um, was just ask for help before things got rocky. A lot of times we feel that we can handle things on our own or we see things kind of faltering around us and we're like, okay, like soon I'll, I'll get it. Just ask for help before it gets bad because that could stop, I would say, maybe 75% of our problems. But also do something to make someone's day, no matter how big or small you think it is. You never know how it could affect them and how it could come back around to help you as well. Right now. It's been it's been gems. It's been keys. It's been like I I love using the emoji that's like a bullseye. I, I, I'm gonna call it a target. That's <laughs> kind of how it comes up when you type it in. But it's it's been nothing but that from the time we we started to the time we're gonna kind of conclude. And so I like I said, Kayla, I really do thank you. I really do appreciate you. You know, coming on here and really just being transparent, really just sharing this space with me. Thank you for everything that you've done for the plugins that you've gave me for how we've been able to help each other over the years that we've been connected. And um, just thank you for everything that I know you'll continue to do even after. 
this interview for the years to come, just the impact you'll have. So before we officially wrap things up and close things out for everybody out there, you know, just trying to tap in with you in some form or fashion. And for the people out there, look, y'all need to be trying to tap in with her with some form or fashion. Can you just tell us where we could find you on social media? Yes. So um, on all platforms, you can find uh, the hair collection at K Granger, K-A-Y-G-R-A-N-D-E-U-R. My personal Twitter is K Granger CEO. And then um, on Instagram, it is still K Granger. And my personal is K-A-Y.Nicole.J. But of course, they will be um, included in the bio. And thank you all for supporting. Absolutely. And I echo that same message. Like I said, make sure y'all definitely tap in with her. Thank y'all all for the constant support, not only of me, not only of Kayla, not only of the businesses to come, not only of the prior businesses, but just everything, man. We we definitely have the power to, you know, to really come together to really make things work, but we really just have to win it for ourselves first and foremost. So as always, thank y'all for tapping in. Thank y'all for tuning in. I love y'all always. This has been another episode of the Balance of Business Podcast. Here with Tamar Turner.